Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 1st, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now, as an opener for this segment, I want to talk a bit about policy and, and the importance of policy. Governments around the world, in many ways, decide our trajectory in much the way that a captain decides the course of a ship. And, and in particular, this trajectory, as it relates to human-caused climate change, is very important. So this is one reason that an association known as the Union of Concer Concerned Scientists is calling out bad policy in the form of Trump and Republican-supported rollbacks of clean cars standards. Now, clean car standards help to fight climate change by reducing carbon emissions from vehicles, and the higher the standards, the less vehicles emit. This drives vehicles to become more efficient, and it also drives the transition to clean energy vehicles, such as electrical vehicles, which, which emit zero carbon from tailpipes and enable a rapid transition away from fossil fuel burning, which is the primary cause of the present climate crisis. Now, the present climate crisis has come into focus recently as we have seen quite a bit of heat around the globe in the Northern Hemisphere this year. And I'd like to call your attention to a new recent record as reported in Weather Underground in Korea. As of Wednesday, the hottest day in Korean history has been recorded. And I'm just going to read a quote from this Jeff Masters' blog at Category 6. I encourage you to go to Category 6 and read the full blog. I'm just going to read one quote here. Wednesday, August 1 was the hottest day in Korean history as a withering heat wave toppled all-time heat records throughout the peninsula. South Korea set an all-time re heat record of 41 degrees Celsius or 105.8 degrees Fahrenheit at Hongcheon, a town in South Korea's northeastern province of Yangwon. This is the highest reading observed anywhere in the nation since 1907 when the country began to compile the data the K Korean M Meteorological Association said. The new record came on the 76th anniversary of the former South Korean national record of 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit set at Dengu in August 1st, on August 1st of 1942. Now looking at the map for Wednesday, we can see a the the pall of heat spreading over both Korea, Japan, and sections of eastern China along the border with Russia. And as we can see, there there's a strong southerly wind flow off a cyclone, funneling warm air from the east over Korea, and. And this warm air is running over much warmer than normal sea surface temperatures. Now, warmer than normal sea surface temperatures are a primary signature of human-caused climate change. And a lot of the excess atmospheric heat that is trapped by greenhouse gas emissions, such as fossil fuel burning, are then rapidly transferred into the ocean through the ocean surface and then telegraphing on through the deep ocean. Now, looking at sea surface temperature anomalies, this is a sea surface temperature anomaly map. Sea surface temperatures to the east of Korea range from two to three and a half to nearly four degrees Celsius above average, and sea surface temperatures to the west of Korea range up to four and a half degrees Celsius above average as part of a large pool of much warmer than normal sea surface temperatures surrounding the Korean Peninsula, Japan, and much of this section of Eastern Asia. Now zooming out, we can see that much of the Pacific is also warmer than normal. And, and this, is, this is a bit of a climate change signal. Recent studies have shown that sea ice loss has, has an effect of, of rather rapidly warming the Pacific Ocean and, and the signal of sea ice loss can telegraph into the Pacific in as short as one decade. And, and presently we see quite a lot of warm sea surface temperatures, very warm sea su surface temperatures ranging the Pacific Ocean. Now, as I said before, this Korean heat wave is just one 
of many heat waves that are affecting northern hemisphere land masses across the northern hemisphere and many of these heat waves are in association with far warmer than normal sea surface temperatures. Now going back to the original point this is this is the beginning of a, a global crisis that that we are experiencing as a global civilization and we need to be on point with clean energy policies and carbon reduction policies from government to government to government across the world. And as concerned citizens, we need to become involved and we need to become politically active and we need to support these policies. Otherwise, these heat waves are going to get a lot worse and, and the future looks worse and worse so long as fossil fuel burning continues. So something to think about in the context of the present crisis, and these are dots that we need to connect if we're going to be responsible. So thank you for joining me, and I'll be chatting with you soon.